Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla and on this week's video we're going to explore a question that gets asked an awful lot. Can you own a car like this and only charge it off a domestic socket? So in my case I've got a 7 kilowatt 32 amp wall charger which I've had professionally installed and before that there was a previous one and at a previous house there was a wall charger because back in 2014 I was one of the crazy people who got a Nissan Leaf. So I'm used to having those but there's been plenty of times where it's either not been working or the car I've had hasn't been compatible and I've used the granny charger which would plug in down here with my outdoor sockets. So here is the question. Can you live without having the fancy and faffy wall box, if I actually get it on camera as I'm talking about that, can you just cope with a trickle charger, even if you've got a big battery, like on my Tesla Model Y? So the first thing that we're going to do is to double check the rate that we get using the wall box. So charging, I usually have to set um, off overnight but as you can see I'm on 46% at the moment I've actually got to go and run a couple of trips today so I'm not going to charge it now but first of all let's just see what we get when we actually connect on to the wall box so as you can see it's now ramping up four kilowatts keep on going five good so there you go, it's now charging at, well, it says eight, it's seven point something effectively. Yeah, I mean, you can do the maths, it's seven point something kilowatts. So that is charging up at, I think I need to get out and switch the car off. And then, okay, yeah, there you go. It is not giving me the miles per hour thing. Does it only give you the miles an hour display on a supercharger? Anyway, as you can see from 46%, it's not going to take me very long to get up to 80% power. So let's go and unplug that now. You can see it charges pretty quickly. So because we're doing this properly, we are going to switch the thing off at the wall so that we can't accidentally forget that we're doing this thing. So that's now off. And just in case wifey forgets, I'm even going to remove the cable from the unit and stow it. So that is now dead. The cable is no longer in use. Ugh. That needs a clean. And we are gonna get the three pin out. But before we do that, I'm gonna go and run a few errands. It's many hours later, I've been out and done lots of various jobs, including getting these. I have shoved the car well, well, well away from a charge point because we are going to simulate what it is to not have a charge box. So what I'm going to have to do is get an extension lead from my wall socket, which is behind Blue Midget there, to be able to run it out to the car. Extension leads are bad, aren't they? A minor problem. I have got a... I think 25 meter extension reel cable, which is now plugged in back there, but it doesn't actually reach quite as far down as I was gonna park the car. So that's sat down there. It would go to about maybe there, but it's not actually gonna reach. So let's get the granny charger out and have a play. It might be that this simulation is going to mean that I park the car maybe there or somewhere like that. Either way, a long, long way from a charge point. What I like about Tesla is that they do think about packaging and design. So having a neat little case to be able to put your granny charger in, although it's quite difficult to do single-handed, but basically there it is, the UK edition with one of our fantastic safety plugs. And of course, this bit is interchangeable. So you can get one that has got a commando socket on the end, as an example. This baby will do 32 amps if you've got the right kind of socket and the right kind of connector to plug it into. In my case, we have got 240 volts on one of these. So let's get on with it. Okay, I shunted the car forward literally 
couple of meters, no more than that. And that gives me just about enough cable then, with that over there, to be able to plug this in. Yeah. And that's out of the way of the door. And it'll stay out of the way of us getting into the garden. Okay, so this, I think, is the important point, right? This is a proper working cable. So this is a 13 amp continuous load, excuse me, cable, which is absolutely perfectly capable of taking the kind of power that this is going to be taking. But the other point, and this is, I think, where there is some hesitation about extension cables. If you go out and buy a cheapo cheapo 10 amp rated cable, you're gonna have a bad time, okay? Also, if you are plugging into a socket which hasn't actually been tested for a while or has got old wires or frayed wires or anything like that, once again, you're gonna have a bad time. So the key trick here is to make sure that your wiring, if you're plugging into uh, a domestic socket, has been checked and that you've got an extension cable, if you're using one, that is suitably rated for the load that's gonna be taken. Let's see what we're gonna get. So, as you can see, I have got a charging timer set, which we're not going to use while we're here. So what we're going to do is turn that off. Turn the charging timer off, because that's a bad idea when you're charging on teeny tiny amounts of power as I am now. So, <laughs> as you can see, two kilowatts. That is literally what you're gonna get on 10 amps. Now, what I would suggest is that if you're not sure about your cable, turn it down. Because if you go over here and onto charging, okay, you can fiddle around with the amount of power that's being taken. So as you can see, I'm on 10 amps. That's the maximum it'll do, but I could turn it down to say eight amps if I was feeling a little bit worried about the wiring and that is probably a sensible idea but i'm quite confident that all of my wiring is good because it's been installed professionally and it has been checked so we're going to go at 10 amps and at 10 amps from 15 percent as you can see it is going to take basically a full day 24 hours almost to get back to 80 percent not even to 100 percent this thing is slow but the question is is that really a problem? Because here's the truth, guys. Most of the time, your car is sat parked up. Most of the time. If you think about the use of your car, it spends more time parked than it does for anything else. So if you have to trickle charge and it's gonna take a day, okay, if I needed to go somewhere in a hurry tomorrow, that'd be a problem. But there's a reality of, I would keep topping the thing up. So hopefully it wouldn't get down to 15%, which means it's not gonna take an eternity to get up to something a bit more sensible. So we are going to do this little experiment over the next week, maybe two, something like that, where I am only going to be charging on the granny charger on the extension cable. And the reason for that really is I think pretty straightforward, which is so many people have said, oh, well, can you have an EV if you don't have a wall socket and you can't plug the thing in like that? Well, okay, I've now taken that out of use, but most people have got a three pin socket, okay? It might be if you're in a terraced house or something like that, that it's not necessarily an easy reach from the car, which is where an extension cable comes in. And here is, the real premise for this video. My friend Jim, whose house I have charged up at on his charging box, he has, instead of just getting a Tesla, despite watching all of my videos and being my so-called friend, has decided to buy a Mini, an electric Mini, and now his wall box has sat down on the job in protest. So he is now saying, uh, how do I charge my car? Uh, I can't use it. And I was like, mate, you have got sockets, plug it in. And he said, yeah, but the power socket is nowhere near where the car is. Well, that's where 
the extension lead of joy comes in run the extension lead providing that it's a sensible one you're not going to have any problems so it is now six o'clock on saturday let's see how we get on Sorry for interrupting this week's video, but this channel is now sponsored by, well, me, because we have founded Millibricks, which is the new online UK web store for military brick construction sets. Millie bricks, so Lego compatibles, but themed on tanks and planes and trucks and all of the things that Lego don't do. If you're a vehicle fan and you're here, then this is a brilliant place to be able to get all of the more interesting uh, and historical sets that you just can't get through Lego. If you go onto our web store and put the code GET, you will get 10% off everything, which is a fantastic deal. Unfortunately, if you are outside of the UK, we're not shipping abroad yet, but we'll be doing soon. So don't forget millibricks.co.uk for all of your military brick sets like all of these. Back to the video. It is just gone midday, the day after we set the car up on its little granny charge of extension. So it has been plugged in for basically 18 hours. So if you remember, we were on 15%. We are now, see, 69%. So I haven't gone anywhere since we parked the car up yesterday evening. So if you think about basically, you've been out for work or something and the car had really been run down and you got back in. And for a weekend, if you were then going back out, it has added a decent amount of charge. We will need, obviously, to try and have the base level of charge higher than 15% because otherwise it takes a while. But so far, Granny Charger not causing any issues at all. Let's just do a quick sense check of all the connections. So very, very slightly warm, as is that one, but they're both uh, pulling power. The cable is absolutely stone cold so no issues with that and if we go to the other end yeah i left my hat out last night good job it wasn't raining and if we go over to the extension ring so again that is ever ever so slightly warm as is that as they would be but basically no issues with it at all we're the best part of a month on from the last clip and we've been using the granny charger entirely exclusively for all of that time and my conclusion from doing so is that little where is it there that little plug is actually really really good so providing that you keep plugging the car in and there is a maxim with electric cars of always be charging. And I think that if you're using a granny charger, that's definitely the case. Keep topping the thing up little and often, but it does put a decent amount of charge in for the, let's be honest, for most people, 10 to 12 hours a day overnight that the car is just sat there going absolutely nowhere. You can manage on a granny charger, completely fine if that's all that you've got access to so don't worry about the need to be putting in expensive wall boxes or there's not a location for it or any of those other things even if you've got a decent sized battery in a bigger ev like my tesla model y it will work so there is probably a bit of a mea culpa because i did a video early in the days of this channel where i basically said the granny charger what's the point um I was wrong, the granny charger is really, really useful. And as I said right at the beginning of the video, if you buy a different connector for it, it will go all the way up to 32 amps on the right socket. So actually it is the fancy wall boxing. All you need to do is to have a commando socket fitted and the existing granny charger is the turbocharged higher speed seven and a half kilowatt monster that you would expect it to be and on that intriguing note we're going to leave it there thank you so much for watching if you haven't liked and subscribed please do so now and also if you want to buy your own tesla so that you can use a granny charger please use my referral link you can get a thousand pounds thousand euros thousand dollars a thousand whatevers off the price of a car 
if you use the referral link that's down there. And while I wait for these noisy mechanical cars to go past, um, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks very much, and I'll see you back here very soon on Just Get a Tesla.